All right, just going to make a video going through seven verses that refutes the Calvinistic false doctrine of limited atonement. What is limited atonement? Well, basically, what Calvinists believe, and there's a whole, uh, you know, uh, subsection of, of what they believe in the whole thing. But essentially what they believe is that man has no free will in the context of salvation and that God grants people faith and that God chooses who gets saved. That's really when you really get down to it. You talk to any hyper-Calvinist, they'll tell you that. And I'm going to go through seven clear scriptures that totally destroy this uh, Calvinist false doctrine of limited atonement. So first of all, let's go into two really strong scriptures. First two I'm going to show that just as like a baseline to start off what I'm saying. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with, the, with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Okay? Every man. It can't get any more clearer than that. Now, I could just stop this video and just end it right there. But I'm going to show some more scriptures just to further prove my point. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 to 6. Another really strong passage refuting the Calvinistic false doctrine of limited atonement. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved, and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all, to be testified in due time. All. He gave himself a ransom for all. He'll have, God wants all men to be saved. Compare this over with Acts 17.30. God's calling all men everywhere to repent. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Not some, not just the elect. Now, here are some other scriptures that uh, are a subgenre of themselves. This scripture destroys the Calvinist argument that Christ only died for the elect. First John chapter two, verse one to two. It actually addresses and pretty much destroys this doctrine that oh, he only died for the elect. You know, because Calvinists like to play lots of word games on this area, but this scripture is, is a good one to answer them with. First John chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not, and if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is a propitiation for our sins, but not, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Yes, he did indeed die for the elect for the sheep, but for the sheep only? You know, because Calvinists like to rip verses out of context which talk about Christ dying for the church or, or Christ dying for his sheep, but they've ignored the fact that it does not say he died for his sheep only. And it is right here in verse 2. Not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. That's simple. Can't get any more clearer than that. The Apostle John said that Jesus Christ didn't just die for the saved only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The fallen, now this scripture I'm going to read addresses the Calvinist strawman argument that, well, if Jesus Christ died for the whole world, that would mean everybody goes to heaven. That's, that's, you, you hear that I've gotten comments on my Instagram posts and my YouTube videos saying, well, Jesus Christ can't have died, couldn't have died for everybody because that would mean everybody's going to heaven. It's a straw man argument. See, I, I've never said that in my videos, but they, they come up with this straw man and try to tear it down thinking they've won the argument. But this scripture is actually one to address them with that, one to address their, their little straw man argument. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 10. It's a really good scripture to pull down their whole straw man argument. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Now why is this verse significant? Jesus Christ made salvation available to all, but it doesn't have any effect on you unless you believe the gospel. That's what it's saying there. This addresses the Calvinist strawman argument that Jesus Christ dying for the sins of the whole world somehow is a form of universalism. They'll try to claim that. You know, he died, he's the savior of all men, but it does not have any impact unless you believe the gospel. You know, that's what it's saying. Now, here are some other, just three other miscellaneous scriptures that proving that prove basically that Jesus Christ died for everybody, without a doubt. 1 John chapter 4, verse 14. Really strong scripture right here. 1 John chapter 4, verse 14. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the savior of the world. John chapter 4 and verse 42. And said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. And John chapter 1 verse 29. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. 
Okay, and there's and there's scripture after scripture. You got John three sixteen to eighteen. You got John chapter one verse seven to nine. You know, uh, what does it say? It says all men through him might believe. You got, I mean, just so many scriptures. You got again Second Peter three nine. God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I mean, Calvin is the Calvinist limited doc, limited atonement false doctrine is a spit in the face of the grace and mercy of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what it is. It's it's of the devil. It's a false doctrine, saying that Jesus Christ didn't die for everyone. I, I'd say I'd say it's borderline heresy because you're attacking the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're attacking the love and mercy of Jesus Christ. So I wanted to point that out. Don't be deceived by Calvinism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.